So, good morning again. Today we're starting the next unit, which is involving um, rational functions. So, this is a slightly different beast. This has nothing to do with exponentials and logs. It's another classification of things that you'll need to worry about. So, kind of uh, start from scratch. Don't forget your logs and exponentials, though. They just keep haunting you the rest of math forever. So, every skill we learn in here keeps building on itself forever. But today we're going to talk about specifically rational functions, which is a fancy word for fractions. So, we need to remember our basics of fractions. What's going to get you here is the same thing it gets you in most units. It's going to be um, not remembering your basics from years past. So we'll just review the basics really quickly right here. Warm up today. <clears throat> How do you add and subtract fractions, guys? What's the procedure? You need a what? There's the answer. You need a common denominator, adding and subtracting. It's only three fraction rules. So you should really get them down and make sure you have them fully understood. Yes, add, subtract fractions. You need a common denominator. Once you have a common denominator, you just add or subtract the tops, right? You don't change the bottoms, right? A third plus a third is two thirds. It's not two sixths or anything like that. So make sure you have that understood right there. And that's it. Just for how do you add or subtract? Get a common denominator, add or subtract the tops. That's it. Number two today, how do you multiply or divide fractions? If you multiply fractions, you just multiply straight across. There's your answer for that. There's two of the three rules right there. The third one for division, how do you divide by a fraction? You don't. You multiply by the reciprocal. I heard it. I heard it whispered. There you go. So there's everything you should know about fractions in general. Okay, Those are your basics from long time ago, like fourth grade skills that hopefully you've been mastering and cultivating and perfecting throughout all these years. And if not, then that's what's probably going to be the battle for this particular section. Number three, there is one number you are not allowed to divide by. You know what it is? That's right. Trish is on today. Zero. That's exactly right. So we're going to have to watch out in this unit for dividing by zero because we've got division problems. We can't divide by zero. We're going to have to watch out about that. And lastly, number four is really just a graphing problem. So let's get our calculators out and let's graph this thing and see what it looks like. It's a new thing. It's the simplest version of division I could think of. It is involving just one divided by x. Very boring kind of thing right there, one over x. So you get your calculator out, you type in, of course, in your y equals one over x. And if you do, well, before we do, I see division. What can you, what did we just say you can't divide by? Zero, okay. So here's the bottom, the bottom is just x, correct? So I guess that bottom can't be zero, so x cannot be zero. And if you graph one over x, you get something that looks like this. Now, look what happens where x is zero. Here's kind of the heart of this, this unit right here. At zero, this graph kind of goes crazy. Don't you agree where x is zero right here in the middle? Yeah, it kind of goes a little crazy. It blows up on one side. Now, do you think it just stops here? Use your brain. What do you think? You think it just stops? No. It goes up forever. Same thing with this one. It goes down forever. And draw that rough sketch of that thing. That's called our reciprocal function. It's our parent function, the simplest version possible for anything involving division. And that's something that we'll build up today. And right at the bat, we can probably just talk about this thing's domain and range and all these things. Let's draw a quick graph of that on the board and then we'll kind of review that real quick. So this is what one over X looked like you just drew down. Something like this. Now we'll get into it in the lesson formally, but like we just said, it blows up here. Now this has the same thing the last section did. It has asymptotes. Vertical asymptote here, what's an asymptote? Just a line of hugs, right? That's, that's all it is. It also has a horizontal asymptote, and it hugs both ends over here. So this is what one over X looks like. Can you tell me what the domain is by looking at it? It exists over here, doesn't it? It exists, it exists. There's one X value where it doesn't exist. Zero, because you can't divide by zero, but anything past zero is okay. So we have two pieces for my domain on this particular one. Everything from negative infinity to zero is cool. But then you have to add on anything from zero to infinity. You got to skip over that zero right there. Now, oddly enough, if you look at the thing's range, it does the same thing. Up and down stuff, starting at the bottom, it does go all the way down. It creeps all the way up to zero, but it doesn't touch it. It, hit that, it doesn't hit that axis, actually. Then anything after the axis from zero up to infinity is also fair game. So the range is actually the same thing on this. And that's something we'll want to keep in mind as we build up this unit and start talking about fractions and things like that and dividing by expressions. Today's going to be quite a doozy. Here's your LGs. Got a lot of hard stuff in this. 
a lot of factoring and a lot of canceling things out, just like with fractions. I would never. And we got two more units planned for you. This one and the one after this, we'll do trig pretty quickly. Trig and much trick stuff. Get into the home stretch. You guys are doing good. Keep it up. Keep pushing through. Keep trying real hard. That is the secret. The ones who ask a lot of questions and are trying really hard every single day are doing very well. So a lot of this will be review, but just like with logs, you know, when I put the word log in, you kind of freaked out and forgot how algebra worked. And it was just a number. Well, same thing here today. Okay. If I got X plus twos or X is floating around, it's still the same rules for fractions. It's always been that we reviewed in the warm up. So hopefully it won't be that bad. All right. You got some homework, of course, associated with this homework 9.1, brand new stuff. We're in unit nine now. We're going to shoot for two days on this. It is kind of intensive. So try to get booking on it. Page 455, one through 15 odd, then skip some word problems because you don't want to do those. And 21 through 35 odd after that. Do Wednesday, tomorrow's entirely a work day. And uh, if it's, if it's going to be a battle, it's going to be a battle because of factoring. That's basically what it's going to be. It's going to be factoring. All right, let's dive in. Ready? Some notes, 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 new unit, new stuff, fresh stuff. Here we go. Unit nine, put a big old heading. I like big headings for new topics. Logs and exponentials are gone. We won't be touching on them again until the final, but tuck them away. Every single skill I've taught in here does come back and get to you. You're, you're learning your ABCs. So to say someday you won't need the letter Q is silly. Unit nine, rational functions, here we go. Section 9.1 today, specifically about multiplying and dividing rational functions. So that's what we're starting on today. Okay, right off the bat, 9.1. Don't write anything down. Just look at what's going on here, okay? You're doing things you always did. You just are doing it with X's now. Look at this middle example right here. First of all, what is a rational expression? It's a fancy word for fraction. If you don't know what that means, when everybody says the word rational expression, rational equation, it means a fraction. But down here with fractions, we're essentially today going to try to do the same thing we always do with fractions. If I give you 35 over 40, and I, I would dock you for that if you put it on your test because it could be reduced, correct? What do you do when you're reducing things? What you're really doing is you're factoring them. You don't know you are. When you see a 35 and a 40, you know that there's a five that goes to both of them. And what you do is you divide them both by five. But what you're really doing is factoring a five out of the top. The top is five times seven. The bottom is five times eight. Now, when do things cancel on top and bottom? Do you see how on top it's all these things are multiplied together? You see the five times seven and the five times eight? When things are multiplied together, that is when you can cancel them on the top and the bottom. See, a lot of people on tests, and I really yelled about this last unit, but some people still didn't listen. If there was a five plus seven on top and a five plus eight on bottom, would they cancel? The answer is no. They all have to be times together. So five times seven, five times eight, the fives would cancel, and that gives you seven eighths. What we're trying to do today is the exact same concept with X stuff, okay? So here's a rational expression down here. Can you cancel these X squares out? The answer is, no, why not? Because what's in between them? Pluses, right? Minuses, see all that? So don't make that mistake of just canceling things out. People do that all the time. I see it on top, I see it on the bottom, it must go away. Not necessarily. What you're going to do is just like with this one up here, you're going to factor it. You're going to try to break this into things that are multiplied together to be it. So this top one, x squared plus 7x plus 10. Do you buy that factors into x plus 5 and x plus 2? Ah, yeah. And the bottom one, if you factor that one, it turns into x minus 3 and x plus 2. Now, if you look on top and bottom, I see two things multiplied together on top. There's an x plus 5, correct, times an x plus 2. And on bottom, you got an x minus 3 times an x plus 2. Do you see how these things on top and bottom are all multiplied together? The x plus 5 is times the x plus 2. The x minus 3 is times the x plus 2. And since they're all times together, things that are on top and bottom, just like this example up here, will cancel out. So the x plus 2s will completely cancel out. They will go away. And this will be simplified down to x plus 5 over x minus three. That's kind of our goal today. Factor the heck out of stuff. And if there is something on top and bottom that's all multiplied together and this on top and bottom, it will cancel out. That's our main goal. So let's dive in and start doing some examples. Try this one out. Write it down, simplify this. X squared minus two X. Oh, oh, oh. 
factoring, factoring, factoring. If factoring is a weakness, hopefully this section will clean it up. And if not, you're in trouble. I'm just being realistic. I'm saying your whole test will probably be things just like this at the heart where we have to factor it and figure out what's on the top and the bottom, but we'll figure it out. And if we're not the best at factoring, well, dang it, we'll get better at it. Okay, here we go. So can anything cancel out right now? No, don't fall for that, okay? So that's not gonna fly. So what you do is you just start factoring the top and you start factoring the bottom. Now, the first thing to always check with factoring is do they have something in common? The top one does not. There's nothing that goes in x squared, 2x, and 24, is there? There's, there's nothing in common there. Okay, so we abandon that. And then we go to our normal stuff. It's a quadratic, correct? So I'm trying to find two numbers that multiply to be the last term of negative 24, correct? Uh, can you think of numbers that multiply to be 24? Eight, two and, two and 12. And as you're doing this, do they add or subtract in any way to get this middle term? Does two and 12 in any way add or subtract to get two? Not six and four, that's promising, isn't it? Okay, let's try that one out. So how about, and one's gotta be positive, one's gotta be negative, correct? Should be this. So how about X minus six and X plus four, does that pass the test? I don't know, does it? That work, do they multiply by negative 24? Yes, do they add to be negative two? Yeah, okay, so check yourself as you go. Down the bottom, same deal. We're gonna start off fresh on this one. First thing with factoring is do they have something in common? Yeah, they do. Doesn't two go into all those numbers? And don't they all at least have an X? So we'll factor a two X out. We're gonna carefully see what's left over when we do. We take a two and a two, a two X out of a two X cubed. Well, the two is gone. One of the X's is gone. And now leave me with two X's remaining. So on and so forth. If you take a two out of a six, remember when you're taking them out, you're dividing by them basically. So six divided by two is three. And if you had two X's and you divided by one of them, took it out, then you'd have one X remaining. Lastly, if you take a two X out of a negative eight X, then the two out of the eight turns into a four and the X is gone. So we have this right here. That's step one. Questions over that factoring thus far? Okay. Proceeding, can you do more? Keep factoring as much as you can. Now this thing springs to be factored more, don't you? Kind of agree. So we're gonna keep going. We're gonna rewrite it, x minus six, x plus four, two x. And this thing right here, I'm thinking two numbers that multiply to be four and add to be somehow to be three. I'm probably thinking uh, four and one somehow, would you kind of agree? So how about x plus four and x minus one? I also want you to take a look at the hint for how math books work, okay? In the real world, this isn't gonna work out, but the point of this, these problems are what? There's something on top and bottom that will probably cancel out. So on the top, as soon as you saw there was an X minus six and X plus four, guess what? Probably the bottom had an X minus six or an X plus four also. And it did, didn't it? It had an X plus four. Now, noting on top, notice everything's multiplied together, right? This X minus six thing is times the X plus four thing, right? And on the bottom, you have a two X thing times an X plus four thing times X minus four thing minus one thing. They're all multiplied together, correct? That's when things can cancel out. And I see something that's on the top and the bottom. There's an X plus four here and X plus four here, correct? So they will cancel out. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Anything divided by itself just turns into a one. Just like if you were factoring things, there was a five on top and a five on bottom, five divided by five is one, right? Kind of cancel out. Is there anything else that cancels? I don't think so, do you? That's not the same as this, right? The, the X's don't cancel or anything like that. So that's it. Your final answer is X minus six over two X times just whatever's left, which is X minus one. That's the goal of these problems. Factor them and see what the heck it happens to be. While we're at it, building up things that will be on the test eventually, whether the question asks for it or not, I'm gonna ask you what the domain of this thing is. Now, the only thing you gotta worry about with the domain is two things, dividing by zero, and you can't have negatives under even roots. Now there's no roots in these problems at all. So the only thing you have to worry about is dividing by zero. Look on the bottom when it was factored, okay? Go term by term and tell me when it's zero. Can you solve this in your head real quick? Here's two X, right? That's something. When's two X equal to zero? Can you solve that? When X is just zero, right? So X can't be zero. If it was, that'd be zero and the whole universe would fall apart. From this one, what can X not be? Negative four. And X can't be one. 
So there's three numbers I would have to take out of my domain. It can't be zero, it can't be negative four, and it can't be one, correct? So what I'm gonna lead up to on the test is, I want you to tell me the domain for these, which means you're gonna write down all the numbers except for those ones that made the bottom equal to zero. And we're gonna go in order. If I'm coming in from the left, the first number I would hit would be negative four, would you concur? So we're gonna go all the way up to negative four, but we're gonna skip over negative four. Anything between negative four and the next number on the number line, which will come next probably zero, right? Anything from negative four to zero is okay. Everything from zero to one is okay. And that's it. We covered all three of them. We took all three out. We had to take out the negative four. We had to take out the zero. We had to take out the one. You gotta take out things that make the bottom equal to zero. That's my main theme for that. Questions on that at all? All right, let's try another one. Let's see what else the book's got for us. Ho, ho, ho. All right, how about this one? X squared plus two X plus one. Personally, I hate factoring things when the number in front of the x squared isn't a one. It really annoys me. The top doesn't look so bad. The bottom looks like a little pain in the butt because it's not x squared, it's 4x squared. And these are the ones where you got to you have some patience and you got to try different combinations and things like that. Luckily, sometimes you can be a smart test taker too. If you look on the bottom of all these options they gave you, look what's on the bottom of most of them. This one has a 4x minus one. This has a 4x minus one. Maybe, uh huh, maybe 4x minus one goes in the bottom. This option has a 4x plus one, so it could be a 4x plus one, but we'll let that guide us as we go, and maybe we can use that as a little cheat to get a start or something like that. All right, but regardless, we're going to start the same way. The top, can I factor it? The answer is yes. How about x plus one and another x plus one? I think that fits the bill, doesn't it? One times one is one. One plus one is two, right? So we're okay on that. And down at the bottom, okay. How do you factor one of these beasts? Well, you kind of start the same way. The two numbers on the end must multiply to be still the number on the end, which is negative one, right? There's only one way to get negative one. A positive one and a negative one. It's the only way I can get two numbers to multiply to be negative one. And the numbers in front here aren't gonna be x and x because x times x is x squared. I don't have x squared, do I? I got four x squared. So what you have to do is you put numbers in front of here that when they multiply, they be the first term in this case. So you could have a two x and a two x, would you agree? That might work. It could be a four x and a one x, would you agree with that too? So I don't know, let's see. It, it just takes some experience to know where they go. I know the four X is gonna go here and there's gonna be an X here. Now, how did I know that? What you do is kind of distribute out in your head as you go and see what happens. X times four X is four X squared, correct? That's what I want. Now these don't, mold, these don't add to be the middle term, do they? No, that does not work when you have something in the front that's not a one. You have to distribute out and see what happens because X times negative one is negative X, correct? And one times four X is four X. So you got a four X and a minus X. What's that all together? Okay, that's how I got to figure it out. Now I knew that from experience. Don't be afraid to put it in the wrong spot, okay? You put the four X here and the X there. Okay, try it, distribute it out. If it's not the original, okay, try again. You put a two X here, a two X here. Okay, distribute it out real quick. If it's not the original, try again. Okay, unfortunately it just takes a lot of patience to factor things. Questions over that factoring? Okay, so now we're in the same spot. The whole reason we're factoring it right is things times each other on top and bottom so I can see if there's something on top and bottom that cancels out. And there is. I see an x plus one on top, don't you? And another x plus one. So one on the top and the bottom is going to cancel. It doesn't really matter which one. Well, let's just have this one cancel with that one. And it's simplified now. Now we have what's left on top is just x plus one. And what's left on bottom is just 4x minus one in that case as well. And that's the whole point of this section. Factor, cross out, factor, cross out. We'll practice domain real quick though. So again, if this thing was a function on the test and I said, what's the domain? You'd say, okay, it's anything except for where the bottom is zero. So that one's pretty obvious that I canceled that cross out already. It was a negative one, would you agree? Negative one's no good. Negative one, bad. Negative one's bad. This one right here, it's not so obvious what makes that zero, is it? Don't be afraid to go off to the side 
and make up an equation and see when that thing is equal to zero. So if 4x minus 1 is zero, I think that'd be when 4x is 1, correct? And dividing by 4, it's a fraction, but that's okay. x can't be 1 fourth. So x can't be 1 fourth. If it was, this thing would be zero. X, x can't be negative 1, or else this thing would be zero. So these are the two numbers that are bad. So our domain is going to be everything except for those two numbers. And putting them in order from left to right, that means everything from negative infinity to negative one is okay, but I got to skip over negative one. Can't have negative one, it's bad. Everything from negative one to the next number of a fourth is okay. Got to skip over the fourth, because that's bad. And everything from a fourth to infinity is fine after that. So got to stop and ask yourselves, when is the bottom zero? And your problems will probably ask you, state which numbers it can't be. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm kind of figuring out what numbers it can't be, because you cannot divide by zero. Zero bad. And then they, get, then they get worse. So here's another one. It looks really scary, but it'll be OK. We'll figure it out. It's got x's and y's, but that doesn't mean anything is any different. Half the battle is not freaking out and just being patient when you see some weird stuff. So this one's got 6x squared minus 5xy as one term on top. That term is times x plus 2y. And that's all over an x plus y and a 5y minus 6x. All right. Even though it's complicated with x's and y's, our goal is the same thing. We're going to try to factor this more, make it even better. And hopefully, there's something on top and bottom that will cancel out. It looks already factored. And that's pretty good. Um, do you see anything that's the exact same thing on top and bottom? I don't either, so I don't think any can cancels. But were these factored completely? Let's see here. How about this term? Could you factor this more? Is there something that goes into this? Both of these? There's an x in both of these, aren't there? Well, this is they didn't do a very good job factoring. I can factor out more stuff. So we're going to take an x out of this top. So if I take an x out of the 6x squared minus 5xy, then what's left is there's one less x in everybody. It'd be just 6x minus 5y. They all got an x taken out. And then what's left over here is still the other stuff. I don't think there's anything that goes into x and 2y. Would you agree? Can't factor that more. Got an x plus y. Nothing. They don't got anything in common. Got a 5y minus 6x. They don't got anything in common. Shoot. You know, we factored an x out. But still, I don't see anything that's exactly the same on top and bottom, do you? I see something that's similar on top and bottom, but slightly different. Do you see something that's similar on top and bottom? What's, what's on the top and bottom that's the same but different? Oh, man, yeah. OK, here's the trick on these ones, OK? These are almost the same thing. How are they different, though? This is positive 6x. That's minus 6x. That's minus 5y. That's positive 5y, right? They're almost the same thing, except their signs are backwards. Would you agree with that? OK, so here's the other trick. Pay close attention to this one, because this is a great trick right here. Since they're almost the same thing, but their signs are different from one of them, I don't care which one, you're also going to factor a negative out of it. Probably the top one's easier, OK? Now, there's no negative in both of these, is there? That's OK. I'll still take a negative out. So I'm going to take a negative out of this thing. I'm going to put it out in front with the x. So I took a negative out of that junk. But when you take a negative out of this, remember what you're doing is when you take factor something out, you're dividing by it, right? So what's 6x divided by negative 1? Well, it's negative. 6x. And negative 5y divided by a negative 1 is a positive 5y. So that's a great trick right there. You might need to factor a negative out of an expression to make it look like another expression inside of your rational thing. Down at the bottom, we still got x plus y. And this one, is this one now the same as this one exactly? It is, actually. It's just written in a different order. Would you agree? I got a negative 6x here. It's the same thing, though. I'm going to write it in the same order, just so it's very obvious to you that this thing is the exact same as this thing. So now, finally, do I have something on top and bottom that is exactly the same? Yes, I do. So they cancel out. And I don't see anything else on top and bottom that will cancel. So your final answer is left with a negative x on top. You have an x plus 2y. And on the bottom, the only thing that left was left was a lone x plus y. So we have that remaining right there.
I will, I will not ask you for domains or anything weird like that with X's and Y's and stuff like that. But that was gold right there. Did you see that trick where I factored a negative out of one of them? That's really important. Don't forget that trick. In fact, if you want to make a note to yourself real quick, might want to factor a negative out of an expression. That'd be a good note to write down. If a certain quantity is not quite what you want, but the signs are backwards, you can factor a negative out. Don't let the negative disappear. Notice my negative kept floating around the rest of the problem, right? Took the negative out, then it was negative x, and negative x, and negative x. You can't take, the negative can't disappear, but it will switch the order of things, which might get you out of a jam like that, and that's freaking important right there. Okay, how about this one? It started to be factored. That's nice. I got some things times some things. That's good. But can you do better? Did this person factor everything as well as they could? Let's see. The first expression, 7y minus 3x. Is there anything that goes into 7 and 3? No. Anything that goes into x and y? No, they're different letters. Can't do anything with that. How about the second one, 5x minus 1? Well, nothing goes into 5 and 1. Interesting, except for 1. One's got an x, one doesn't. I can't factor that anymore. Oh, <gasps> look at the next one on the bottom left. It's got a 5x cubed and an x squared. Is something they got in common? They both got an x. How many x's? They at least got two, don't they? So we'll take out an x squared from that expression. And we'll be remaining from that 5x cubed plus x squared. When you took an x squared out, it would be a 5x plus 1. And then lastly, you have a 3x minus 7y still on the bottom. And I don't think anything goes into those again, right? 3 and 7, nothing in common there. x and y, nothing I can do there. Hmm. OK, I don't see anything that's the same on top of bottom. These were close, weren't they? Uh, but that one's minus, that one's plus, right? So they're not the same, are they? Oh, that's the point, isn't it? Yeah, OK. Aren't these two pretty much the same thing? Except they're off by a sign, right? So we're going to use that trick we just learned. We're going to take a negative out of one of them, probably the top. It doesn't really matter. If you're going to put it on the bottom, it's fine. But having a negative sign on the bottom is kind of awkward. So I'm going to take a negative out of the top. Now, if you take a negative out of your 7y minus 3x, your minus 3x now becomes plus 3x. And your plus 7y is now minus 7y. So I wrote them in a different order at the same time because, boy, I want to match the bottom exactly. Because the bottom's got a 3x minus 7y, doesn't it? Oh, man, that's awesome. So now, finally, they got the same thing on the top and the bottom. We had to take a negative out of this expression. We factored, we tried, we did everything we could. And there's only one thing they have in common, this 3x minus 7 and this 3x minus 7. One on top and bottom cancel out. And then we're, we're done. There's nothing else that cancels. Do you see anything else that cancels? I don't think so. So what's left is a negative sign, negative, times all of 5x minus 1. And that's all over this x squared times 5x plus 1. And nothing's going to cancel. If you wanted, you know, if you, at this stage, you could either take another negative out of this if you wanted to. Could you put this negative back in? Yeah, yeah you could. What was the point of taking the negative out? So these two things. Cancel out. After you're done with that, you can do with the negative whatever the heck you want. You want to put it back in, you want to take another negative out, you want to leave it just like that, that's totally up to you. The point is that these two canceled out. So I'm fine with this. In fact, probably that's the best way to leave it right there. Well, let's see. Let's put the negative back in. If you put the negative in, then that's negative 5x then, correct? And the negative times the one, negative one is a positive one. Now, do these cancel out? No, why not? Because uh, this one's a negative 5, and this one's a positive 5. If they were going to cancel, guess what? They would have canceled right there. So don't, don't spend too much time putting negatives back in or anything like that. Kind of the point is to get out, see if things cancel. And if they do, great, that's fine. You don't have to worry about cleaning up too much. If things are canceling out, you're probably doing it just fine right there. All right. Now, moving right along, the other thing they're talking about, of course, besides multiplying is dividing. And again, as we've talked about, how do you divide by a fraction? You don't. If you have a fraction divided by another fraction, remember keep, change, flip, that kind of stupid crap? Well, you keep the first one right. So A divided by B be the first one here, right? Keep it. 
you change, change the division into multiplication, and you flip the last one. So keep change flip, but I like to say it more maturely, don't divide by a fraction, multiply by the reciprocal. It's all the same stuff. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna simplify a lot of things called complex fractions. You don't need to write that down, but a complex fraction looks really scary. It's like fractions inside of fractions and things like that. But it's really not as bad as it looks, and we'll practice some of those as well in a second. Okay, before we do, here's an example. If you want to jot down, be my guest, I would. I'm not going to stand up for this one. A lot of work. Here you have a fraction, 3x over 8y, and you're multiplying by another fraction, 12x squared y over 9xy cubed. Now, I don't know if I'd go through all this. They really are, they really are making this a little overly complicated. What, what do you have to do to multiply fractions? Multiply straight. Across, that's the rule. So that's what we're going to do. Now on top, forget all this other junk they've written over here. What do they got? A three on top and a 12 on top? Multiply them together. What do you get? What's three times 12? 36. So there's a 36 on top. Multiply other things on top. There was an x times an, there was an x squared too, wasn't there? What's x times x squared? Okay, so there's an x cubed. And there was also a y on top that just didn't really go with anybody, correct? So the y is just going to chill by itself. And same thing on the bottom. Multiply straight across. Eight times nine is 72. And then what else we got? We got a X all by its one X. And I see a grand total of four Y's. You see four Y's? So Y to the fourth. That'd probably be step one on this problem. And this is one of our weaknesses right here is good old fashioned old exponent rules and things like this. This is the correct answer, but there's a lot of simplifying to do. Would you kind of agree that there's a lot of things I could reduce? Well, I want you to kind of do it in two stages. I want you to forget the X's. I want you to forget the Y's. Let's just do numbers for a second. If I gave you 36 over 72, do you think that reduces? It is a half, right. And a half means a one over two. So there's still a one on top and there's a two on the bottom. Do you need to write one time stuff? No. In fact, that irritates me. If you did it on your test, I might have even docked you a half a point or something like that, like in one X or something like that. Like, stop doing it. Okay, so we got a half from these, correct? Okay. Now, this does seem to be a weakness of ours. What do you do with your exponents when you divide things? You subtract them, right, yes. By the way, this is not the same thing as this. This is on your test. And a lot of people just got rid of the basis. But what are you supposed to do with the exponents? You're supposed to subtract them, right? So this one wasn't this. It was 6 to the minus 7x because negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. Heads up. A lot of people missed that one on the test. But in the exact same fashion right here, like you just said, you subtract your exponents. And this is really x to the first, correct? And 3 minus 1 is 2. So I got an x squared. Positive exponents go on the top. Where do negative exponents go? Bottom, yes, indeed. Oh, speaking of, how about these y's? There's one on top and four on bottom, correct? What's one minus four? Okay, so I got a y to the negative three. But if we, like we just said, a negative exponent means on the bottom. So don't call it y to the negative three. Call it a y to the positive three on the bottom right there. And what that slide was trying to show you in a weird roundabout way is why does that exponent rule work? If you write out what goes into all these things, look at the y's on the top and the bottom. How many y's were on the top? One, right? How many were on the bottom if it meant uh, y to the fourth? There are one, two, three, four. Would you agree? If you write them all out, you see why this exponent rule works. Isn't there a y on the top and a y on the bottom somewhere? Do they cancel? And how many would be left on the bottom then? Three. So it's the same logic as this right here, but I prefer you learn your exponent rule so you're not writing out factors all day like some kind of weirdo or something like that. Cool? All right. Oh, look at this. It looks scary. Oh, my gosh. It's time to, time to cry. Yep. That's just normal part of depression. Life. That's life. Yeah. Yeah. I hate myself. 10D to the fifth over 6CD. And we're dividing by 30C cubed. Super spreader. We got this. Now, it's never, ever a bad idea to reduce things at any point. 
even before we dive into the problem, forget the division for a second. Do you see things that could be simplified? Some, I do. I see, uh, let's just go fraction by fraction. There's a lot of things we could do to simplify this before we even get started. Like 10 sixths. Could I reduce 10 sixths? What goes into both of those? Okay, so if you divide them both by two, really, I could call this a five over three. Would you agree? Yeah, you don't have to reduce right in the beginning, but it'd be smarter. My kid fights me on this all the time at home, like with his math homework. He, he likes to just multiply all the big numbers together instead of reduce before he goes. And then his, he, he gets these huge numbers and he has to reduce them down. It's really pain in the butt. He does it right, but it's inefficient. Okay, anything else we could simplify on this one? Oh, there's some Ds. What do you do with your exponents again when you divide? So five minus one would be four. So there's really a D to the fourth and positive exponents go on the top, right? And then there's still a C on the bottom, right? We didn't do anything with that. So do you all buy that this is the first fraction simplified? Okay. Before I even worry about this divide by stuff, let's try to simplify this one some. This looks like it has some stuff I could do to make it better. Like 30 over four. I think something goes into 30 and four. Two does. Let's divide them both by two. So we can call the 30 a 15. We can call the four a two. Can we reduce that anymore? No, that's a good try. How about some C's? I see C's. How many C's will there be all together when you're done? Yeah, C squared. Yep, so that's going to go on top then, correct? And there's just a D squared on top, or, and there's nobody else with him, so we'll just leave him be. So not a bad idea to simplify as you go. Should you simplify in the middle of your problem? Yeah, should you simplify at the end? Should you simplify at any point in time? Heck yeah, it's always a good idea. Okay, but the point of this problem isn't really that. It's how do you divide by a fraction? You don't. You multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so keep 5d to the fourth over c, 3c. Change times, right? Flip. We're going to flip the second one. 2 over 15 c squared d squared. So that's all you got to do for division. That's it. Division is not a brand new thing. All you're doing is just going to turn it back into a multiplication problem. That's it. Keep change flip, and then you're out of the woods, and you're back to multiplication. Then like any other multiplication, how do you multiply fractions? You just go straight across. So here we go. 5d to the fourth times 2. Well, 5 times 2, I can do that. That's 10. So I got a 10d to the fourth on top. Down on the bottom, multiplying straight across, I got a 3 times a 15, and you can figure out what that is. That's 45. How many Cs are on the bottom altogether? Yeah, there's a C cubed, and there was also a D squared, correct? So we're done. We multiplied straight across. But like I just got done harping on, when should you simplify? Always. Can we simplify this? Yes, I think we can. Let's do some numbers. 10 and 45? I think five goes into those. So if you divide them both by five, you get a two on top and a nine on bottom. That doesn't reduce any farther, does it? Two ninths? Nope, so we're done with the numbers. How about some Cs? I'll go in alphabetical order. There's only Cs on the bottom. Okay, so there's three Cs on the bottom. There's really nothing I can do with that. But I do see some Ds that'll simplify. Subtract your exponents again, right? Four minus two is two. That's positive, so it goes on the top. So there's a D squared on top, and that's been simplified down about as far as we humanly can do it. And again, you didn't have to simplify right off the bat, but if you hadn't, you would have had a lot bigger numbers. It would have taken a lot longer time to reduce them. So reduce them at any stage, never a bad idea. It's like combining like terms, like why not? Okay, now this one looks scary. It's not that bad. Let's drop this one down. This is one of those complex fractions. There's fractions inside of fractions. It's the same problem you just did. It's just not written in the middle school way. So you're kind of freaking out and saying, oh, what do I do with this? But I see a fraction, 3x over x minus y, and that entire fraction is divided by a whole nother fraction, 6xy over 4x squared minus 4y squared. Ew. It might really help you guys instead of looking at like this. I bet this scares you, doesn't it? Okay. Well, let's just break it down into something a little simpler language. I see a fraction divided by a fraction. Let's write it the old elementary school way, just so it's easier. This fraction, 3x over x minus y, is divided by 
this other fraction, which is 6xy over 4x squared minus 4y squared. Doesn't look quite as scary this way, would you concur? It means the same thing. So if I give you one of those ones, and I will, maybe just go right at the elementary school way, and then it won't be nearly as bad. Okay, so there's lots of things to do. Should we factor things, see if they cancel out? Yeah, we should. But more importantly, let's just get through this thing. How do you divide by a fraction? You don't. You multiply by the reciprocal. So let's just do that right off the bat. Keep, change, flip. Okay. So now we got this. Now we're down to a multiplication problem. How do you multiply fractions straight across? So let's see what we have then. On the top, we had a 3x, right? And that's times this whole thing, would you agree? So this is super important. I'm always harping on parentheses, but people kind of ignore it. You have to write this other term in parentheses. It's this term, 3x, times this other term, 4x squared minus 4y squared. That's what the two multiply together. And similarly on the bottom, it's this whole thing times that whole thing. So it doesn't matter what order you put them in. I'm going to put the 6xy first, just because I'm a boss like that. So do you see how those terms were in parentheses when I multiplied them? It's tempting to distribute here, but that's not the point. Points to go the other way. Points to factor as much as possible. Not distribute, not put things together, but just factor them out. So looking at this fresh, do you see anything we could do to factor at all? How about this term? I see something that goes into those. Doesn't four go into those? So can I take a four out? And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So if you take a four out, now there's another four in front. Well, what's four times three while we're at it? Okay, so there's a 12 on top. There's an X. And we're left with an X squared minus Y squared. And on bottom, we have the exact same thing. This does factor more. I bet you don't see it, though, do you? Do you see how it factors, anybody? Oh, the squared thing. See that x squared minus y squared thing? That does factor, but we're not used to doing x's and y's. Dawson, you know what it factors into? Want to take a shot? You just knew that one was the one. All right, well, here's the deal. This is a difference of squares, OK? This is one of those rare equations we did a long time ago, where I said, hey, if you've got a squared minus b squared, you can factor it into a plus b times a minus b. That was an old factoring skill of ours, OK? And this is no different. So if I have x squared minus y squared, I can factor it into x plus y times x minus y, which is kind of strange. So that's exactly what we're going to do on this one. We're going to factor the x squared minus y squared into x plus y and x minus y. And if you don't believe me, if that's how it factors, boil it out and see. x times x is x squared, right? That's good. These two would be a negative xy, would you agree? But then these two would be a positive x, y, and they cancel out, and they're there. And then we're left with a minus y squared. So it's exactly like what I wanted. And then the bottom, we still got the 6xy times x minus y. OK, I think we've done as much factoring as we can. Would you concur? Good thing I did, because what, what's on top and bottom? There's an x minus y on top and bottom. So they will cancel. That's awesome. Is there anything else that's all on top and bottom that would cancel out? Well, I got, yeah, I, I got a 12 over 6. I'll deal. Let's deal with that. What's 12 divided by 6? 2, right? So there's just a 2. So there's a 2. That's what's still chilling. We dealt with the 12 and the 6. But there's an x here, right? Yeah, there's an x here and an x there. So they actually cancel out also. And if you summarize everything you had, 12 divided by 6 was the 2, correct? What's left on top is still an x plus y. And there's still something on the left on bottom that didn't cancel out too, the y. Right? Not the 6, because we dealt with the 6, didn't we? The 12 divided by the 6 was the 2. That's where we got that from. So finally, after all that work, it turns into something far simpler like that, which is the point. The point is to have something really gross and ugly and simplify it down, and that's kind of all there is to that. And you do the same thing on this one, and that's kind of all there is to today's lesson, OK? You're just doing normal fraction rules with variables. But factoring, as you see, is a key part of this, correct? So you're going to need to fact your butt off. I would get a start on this tonight. And tomorrow we'll have a full blow-on workday over homework 9.1.